Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon and you guys have asked me so many questions about what camera I use to film. Well, I was filming with the Panasonic GH4 and I've recently updated to this, the GH5. Panasonic have actually asked me to make a cake version of this camera for an event in Sydney. So I'm going to make this but scale it up to feed more people. I've made a template for all the cake pieces and the fondant details and you can get that and all the recipe details that you need to make this on the howtocookthat.net website and there's a link to that below. You'll need to bake three trays of my rich chocolate cake recipe and bake them and let them cool completely. Now to make some of the details, if you look at the template, there is a bunch of circle buttons that are all the same size. To cut those out, you could use the top of a piping tip, or if you don't have one that size, a bubble tea straw works really well. Push it down into the black fondant to make your buttons, and you'll need to cut a bunch of those. And I'd suggest you cut way more than you think you need, so that if you make a mistake when we're painting them later, you've got spare. Next, we're gonna make this little joystick bit, which is just like a ball with a circle on top. Firstly, roll out some fondant on a slope so that it's thinner on one side, and cut a circle in the size shown on the template. And now you can see it's thinner on one side and thicker on the other. And just put that flat on some non-stick baking paper. While we're here, I'm gonna cut that one too. Just use the template so you know how big to cut these circles. For the joystick, roll a ball of black fondant and cut it into two pieces. It will squash down as you cut it, but that's okay. You can just round it out between your fingers. Just gently roll it until it's round again. Then use a little bit of water to make it stick and add it into the center of our sloped piece. Then cut a circle using a normal sized straw and place that little bit on top and that's the joystick done. For this button here, we've already cut this one on the slope and now we need to cut a smaller circle to go on top of that. And again, just use a tiny bit of water to make it stick. Now for the next size circle, you don't wanna cut it out, you just wanna make an indent in the center. Then using a sharp knife, cut a little segment out of that outer circle and pull that out and then add in a little piece of black fondant sticking out. Cut a tiny rectangle and add it going across that indented segment there. Then take a really fine paintbrush and brush on some white food coloring to make a line on the switch part there and add the letters for autofocus or auto exposure lock. Painting on the letters takes a long time because they are so small, you have to do it really, really carefully. But you can make all of these fondant details up to a month ahead and just leave them to dry out. So I suggest you do that so that you're not stressing out trying to paint tiny letters the day before a party. Do the same for all the round buttons that we cut earlier. Painting on each one, there's a display button, four different custom function buttons, and a play button so you can review what you've filmed. For the color on these, you'll need to mix green with white because if you just use green, it's not going to show up on the black fondant. And you can see all of the rest of the buttons that you need to paint on the photo on the template. Okay, so now we wanna make this click wheel or menu selection one. I'm gonna use a straw to cut out the middle and this one for the next circle, and then this one is not quite the right size, but we'll use it anyway. If you've got the right size, you can use it, but I'm just going to gently squash the fondant to make it a little bit bigger to spread it out to the right size. Then use the other cutters to indent the center of the circle. To make the little arrow indents, just take a brand new eraser and cut a triangular strip off the corner and then you can just push it in to make your little arrows all around the button. Cut a thin strip of black and add it to the edge and trim it to the right size and then repeat that all the way around. For the two mode buttons on the top of the camera, roll a cylinder of black on some netting to get that textured look on the edges. 
and then cut a circle of black fondant and using a little bit of water stick it into the middle. Then using the back of a piping tip indent around that in the center. Then cut a little chunk of black and add it on one side. Then yes, you guessed it, paint on those tiny details. This mode wheel is so you can select video or photo or any of your manual presets that you've set up and some of the presets that are already there. Next, we have a couple of dials. To make them, take a piece of fondant and roll it in a domed shape so it goes up in the middle. Then use the back of a knife to indent it so you get that corrugated pattern. Cut off the edges so you can make sure it's straight and then carefully cut down across in the center and then cut another cut so you've got that rounded dial there. Set those aside to dry out and whip up some buttercream while you're waiting. Cut out each of the layers of cake using the template as your guide and then let's start with the lens. Add some buttercream to baking paper and then add your first circle of cake. Squirt on some simple syrup, then more buttercream and continue to layer it up to the top. Cover the edges in buttercream and then on the top make a circle indent and cut down on an angle so that you're cutting out a cone shaped chunk out of the cake. Then cover the top in buttercream too. Use some acetate to smooth out the sides and once it's all looking good place that in the fridge to firm up. Put your camera template on the cake board and position it how you want the camera to sit. Then add cake layer one over the body of the camera. Remove your template from underneath and then what I suggest you do so it doesn't move on the cake board is add a little bit of buttercream underneath it. Because this cake has to go on a flight, I don't want it to move. Just like we did with the lens, add simple syrup, then buttercream, and then the next layer of cake. And keep going till you get to layer three, and then you want to cut four cake supports to the same height as the cake, push them down into the cake, and then add the cake board on top. And the purpose of this is to stop the weight of the top of the cake from compressing the bottom of the cake and making it go out of shape. Add the remaining layers to the top and then take your template, put it in front and cut the top of the cake to shape. Just take off a little bit at a time, carving it along the line that you've got on your template there. If you look at the cake from the top, you also need to carve off a tiny bit across the back of the camera. It doesn't need to be rounded, it's like a flat edge off the corner. Then on the bit that sticks up, Cut a line straight down and then slice a tiny bit off that back section so it's at a slightly lower level. Then you want to cover the whole thing in buttercream all over. Then use some acetate to smooth it out and place it in the fridge. Grab the lens out of the fridge and peel off the baking paper and wrap it in black fondant. Press the extra fondant in around the edges and stand the lens back upright again. Tuck the edges on top in two, then add a piece into the cone shape and then just tuck it in so that it's sitting nice and neatly there. Then add a ring of black over the top and that looks like the start of our lens there. Add a wider ring of black and this is just to hold the pretend glass bit off the fondant. To make the pretend glass bit, put some isomalt into a jug and microwave it until it's melted. Let most of those bubbles subside and then pour the hot isomalt into a circle cookie cutter. Do the same for the viewfinder and for that shape I'm using aluminium that I've just bent to the right shape. Then you just need to leave those to set. Push the viewfinder piece into some black fondant and then build up black fondant around it in the shapes shown on the template and then leave that to one side. Add the isomalt circle on top of the lens and then put another ring of black on top of that. Using the template, cut the shape of the lens hood and wrap that around the lens. I've added extra Tylose powder into the fondant for this bit and that just helps it dry out quickly and hold its shape. 
Now it's time to cover the cake in fondant. Roll it out, lift it up and place it over the top. But my fondant is ripping, that's why I'm backing off here. Can you see how it's just ripping? It's quite humid here today and that is not ideal for covering a cake. So if you have that problem, roll it out again and the solution is to leave the fondant on your rolling mat lift up the mat and place that over the cake and then peel off your silicon rolling mat so that it just gives it a bit of support while you're bringing it over. Smooth the fondant around the shape of your cake. You can spray the fondant with cooking oil while you work to stop it drying out before you've smoothed it into the shape that you need. If it looks like there's too much fondant on the sides and it's going to crease, don't panic, just lift and lower it as you smooth it down from the top and it's just pretty amazing I don't know how this works but as you lift and lower it starts to just conform to the shape of the cake and you don't need to make creases in it. Trim off the excess fondant from around the base and store it in a plastic bag for later. Then use a fondant smoother to flatten the sides and the edges of the camera. Anywhere that you need a pointy corner, just gently push the fondant in together using your fingers to make a line. Next, we need to make these corrugated bands that go around the lens. To make this pattern, I bought an Afro comb. It is brand new, and even though it is new, I'd still suggest you wash it and dry it before you use it. Push it all the way in along, and then straighten one edge using a knife and a ruler. Now the template shows you the width this needs to be, but I'm gonna cut it slightly wider in case it stretches a bit thinner when I pick it up. Now I'm gonna add a strip of fondant under the lens to hold it slightly off the board and hopefully help it stay in place during travel. Add a little water to the camera body and then add the lens into place. Now you can just drape that strip over the top for the zoom ring and then trim it to length and tuck it in under and around the lens. If any of your corrugations are a bit crooked like mine are, now is the time to straighten those up. Repeat that with another strip for the focus ring. Add a rectangle on one side, then make a little indent and add a triangle there so you know which way to slide open the SD card slots. Add a dot of red fondant on top of the lens indent a line and then paint on some more details. Add a rectangle to the top and indent it for the hot shoe mounting point and now it's time to paint the details that are on the camera body itself. This is a bit more awkward because you can't lay it flat as you paint it so you'll just have to do your best as you go for some of these. Add a rectangle to the back for the flip screen. I indented this with the word Lumix using a rectangle piece of eraser, just like I did when we were doing the triangles earlier. Then start to add the other buttons into place, looking at the template if you're not sure where they go. For the scroll wheels, cut a strip of fondant out and just push them into place then indent a line around it. You don't want to cut through the fondant when you do this, just make an indent. Add the autofocus button and the little joystick that we made. Then add the details that go on top of the camera. The drive mode dial, the mode dial and on and off switch, the shutter release button, the front dial. Draw some lines around that. The white balance, ISO and exposure compensation buttons and the video record button. You can also press the shutter release button to start and stop recording. You don't have to use the video one. Then add the viewfinder to the back and cover the board with white fondant and paint it with brown food coloring to make it look like wood. If you need more instructions on doing this wood effect on fondant, make sure you watch my guitar cake video where I show you that in a bit more detail. And there you have a camera cake, big enough to serve about 45 people. But the question is, will it survive a plane flight? Your luggage is securely stowed under the seat in front of you or into the overhead locker. Your seat back will need to be upright, your tray table stowed, window shade in the open position, and your seat belt fastened. Take care when you
when you open the overhead lockers just in case your luggage has moved during the flight. I also made two chocolate cameras for prizes for the event and yes, despite being stuck in the air circling due to airport closure and a rough landing, I was very relieved when I got the cake box down out of the hand luggage compartment and the cake was still in one piece. Phew. My arms were literally shaking by the time I carried the cake all the way through the airport, past all the gates and waited a long time for a taxi. But we got there in the end and everyone enjoyed eating it. Subscribe to How To Cook That and hit the bell to turn on notifications for all of my new videos. Click here for my guitar cake to see how to do that wood grain effect, here for my Europe trip and here for the latest video. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.